Welcome back, 0K fans, to Nanolay Z Done. I remain your host, Chad Fury333, and this next match is going to be between Flipstep and Orphelius on Lonely Oasis. Which is probably one of the I'd say uh, I'd say Ad Sonia is the best map of this whole series of tropical island maps by Sprung. Lonely Oasis is a close second. And let's begin! Flipstep going for gunship plant. They seem to be enjoying that. Orphelius going for Shieldbot Factory, which I kind of agree with. I mean it's, it's a good factory does work so yeah makes sense to me so yeah that that is how we are going today and Orphelius is just going for a quick bandit for scouting no dirt bags for Orphelius which is unusual for Orphelius and flips up again with Nat and Banshee will it work this time I really want to know I kind of want to see this work admittedly as a cheese strategy I'm not so sure but as a strategy yeah this is a cool strategy I want to see this work more often I feel like it just doesn't get, like, when do you see gnats used? I mean, really, when, how often do gnats get used? It's like, it's almost never. Oops. It's almost never. It, okay, it's occasional, but it's not as often as I'd like. I like the gnat banshee setup. It's just a personal taste thing. The casters just giving their personal taste opinions. So yeah, our Philly should be able to get in pretty quickly and check this all out. However, the one thing I'm worried about a little bit is that Orphelius is not really aware of there being the Banshee Nat setup coming in. There's not much here. In fact, there's a Lotus. Like, Lotuses are probably the best thing to try to fight against as a Nat Banshee setup. So three Nats, two Banshees. This, oof, this is going to be painful. And flips up with the economy afterwards, because, well, you know, who knows? It might not work. You might want to actually go for something a bit safer. Like with the last game, where it ended up not working at all. And... Moment of truth! Let's see what happens. It looks like Vandal's already coming in. There's enough advanced warning that Vandal could come in. Commander stunned out, but once again, not really working out. At least Flipstep's able to get the units away this time. Apparently there's nowhere near as much lag as there was in that previous game, the Isle of Grief game, so there is at least a way out of this. But the Vandal's gonna get over to the edge of the... edge of this cliff. Are they gonna... No, they're not gonna spot it. Really? I mean, no, well, I can't see them. All right, that makes sense. Like, the Vandals should, in theory, be able to hit that, but... Nope. Well, maybe, but they didn't go far enough to actually see them. So at this point, Orphelia is not too concerned. Getting the Vandals up, just in case. And Flipstip just getting their economy up. I mean, at the very least, they forced Orphelia to stay inside of their own base. So Flipstip has a chance to just build stuff up, get their power plants, get all their metal extractors, just set up their economy. Or stand there idly, not doing anything. I mean, there are some banshees going around, but Flipstep apparently forgetting to build things. Not sure what they're focusing on right now. Well, focusing on Orphelius' base exclusively. Trying to set up distractions. That is all they're trying to do right now, is set up these distractions. Not looking back at their own base at all. What are they planning on doing? Something weird must have happened this game. Normally, Orphelius is here to tell me what's going on, because this is odd. Flips to finally getting their economy going again. I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, I think I know what happened. They probably set something up with their commander and accidentally hit the stop button and didn't realize it. So they were thinking, oh yeah, my commander's doing stuff. I'll just deal with this, uh, this assault here, deal with my army. And then it turns out, no, they accidentally stopped their commander from doing anything. They just halfway through an order. Bit of an advantage for Orphelius at this point. Although Orphelius, like I said, while they do have their build-up, they don't have a lot of raiding units. They kind of forced Orphelius to build a lot of anti-air, so Flipstip does have the advantage in the sense that... Well, not the advantage, but does have a way of getting back even. Because they don't really have to worry about getting attacked. Except for the Wasp that does actually kind of have to worry about getting attacked. But other than the Wasp! Other than that, they don't have to worry too much about getting attacked because they aren't going to be hit too hard when stuff happens. At any rate, Flipstip... Yeah, they should get their economy up, no problem. So that's the thing. They're pretty good. Orphelius with the Knights. They have a really nice overdrive grid, though. Flipstep right now, not really going for that at all. They've got a little bit of overdrive, but not much. It's certainly not all connected as, as Orphelius' is. And the Nats finally getting the attention of the Vandals, and that's pretty much it. 
yeah, there's not a whole lot I can really say about that. The Nat's dead. Not doing a whole lot, but that doesn't matter to Flipstep, because Flipstep just cares about economy. Like, they've scared Orphelia sufficiently. And, of course, applying a bit more pressure just to make sure that Orphelius remains appropriately scared as necessary, but for the most part, yeah, it's fine. For the most part, it doesn't matter. Orphelius is just there. Flipstep setting up. Flipstep not likely setting up more gunship. No, no, setting up Jump Bot Factory. Okay. So that's what Flipstep's actual plan is. Go for the Jump Bot Factory. While Orphelius getting very quick Felon. Felon Thug. I guess they figure that Flipstep probably hasn't built too many units here, so they're just going to push in. And the response to this... I mean, there's not going to be a response so much as just a blind pick. But it is a Jump Bot Factory. Now, as a total switch, the Jump Bot Factory is probably going to be used for Pyro or... Uh, no, probably Moderator Placeholder. I mean, it could be Pyro. But this map isn't that big and not that cliffy. So I could see Moderator Placeholder just as a way of dealing with whatever. It's not an uncommon composition, especially in the mid-game. But at the same time, this is an unusual mid-game. And I'm both right. Pyro and Moderator and Placeholder. All the things. And a Jack, for good measure. And Constables. And then loads of placeholders. Okay, that's a bit of an odd cue, but... It's all the things. Alright, so... Pyro is probably not going to be super useful. I mean, the fire is okay, but it's... With this against this... The main use is going to be the fact that it's got high health and it'll drain all the shields that way. Through the felon. Placeholder moderator, however... That's going to rip shields to shreds. Moderators are awesome against shields. Like, seriously, when you consider that... Remember, this damage, that's 500 damage plus 500 because any status effect damage is one-third of that is dealt as actual damage to shields. That's 1,000 damage to shields. And Felon's got, by default, 1,200. So, basically, it one-shots the shields away. And then it hits the unit afterwards. But as for the shields, it's just one shot, the shields are gone. But the question is, will that actually come up in time? Because there's a lot of pyros in the way, and those pyros are taking increasingly long to build. Flips to now run has now run out of storage has lost a few metal extractors that's six metal per second they've lost not a huge deal yet but it will be pretty soon and by pretty soon I actually do mean right now an emergency jack coming in instead of the moderators I mean I can kind of see that you can just rush in get past the shields then stab under and make sure the felon is wasting all of its energy on a single unit trying to kill it that's exactly what you want to do and Flipstep going for the jump. Oh, I like this Banshee. This is cool. I mean, the thing is, Orphelius can't see this. Even with radar, unless the radar is right at the edge. But this Banshee is scouting out that this cliff is completely open. So Flipstep can run in here, get some Pyros in, jump them in, and there's no threat. And then, of course, the Banshee is also distracting to make it Orphelius less focused on these Pyros and the Banshee that helped scout for them. And now the Pyros can take all damage, except for the air damage. You served well, Banshee. You did a good scouting job. Died horribly, but hey, your scouting was on point. So Ophelia's getting well, less damage to the wind generation infrastructure than I expected. Still quite a bit, just a lot of them got set on fire, not actually killed. But hey, good assault nonetheless. I mean, I was actually putting Ophelia at a bit of an energy deficit, forcing them to, well, force them to use more metal than they'd like to. Or sorry, less metal than they'd like to. They're storing a lot more metal than they'd like to. So their energy infrastructure is starting to wobble a bit, especially with overdrive now as well. It's just kind of messy. But at this point, oh, I'm sorry, that's not overdrive, that's reclaim. But yeah, that's, at the same time though, the placeholder is just out. There are the jacks out, they are helping, and they got rid of the felon. But at the same time, that was a lot of damage dealt. Felon gone, placeholder gone, the jacks doing their job. I mean, they they pushed, they pushed Orphelius away. That's the important thing, but Orphelius, they've got all the map control right now. I mean, that was a good assault by Flipstip. Certainly dealt some damage. And there is a fair amount of reclaim, too. A good thousand or so. Well, 500 now. So it's 500 metal worth of reclaim. That's good. But Flipstip did lose metal. They lost this. I mean, it flipped over. Like, that's a 12 metal per second spread there. And there's not much that Flipstip really has to their name. Like, metal-wise, they don't have much. They don't have nine metal extractors... Plus some reclaim. Plus their commander. Eight metal extractors. They just rebuilt the ninth. So yeah, that's not much. I mean, Orphelius also not doing great. I mean, they only have ten. 
So the actual difference isn't great. Destroying these, that helps Flipstip. Like, that keeps Flipstip in the game. That keeps Orphilius from having a commanding lead. Or any lead at all, really. At this point, it's really down to Overdrive and Reclaim. But militarily, Flipstip has a lot to build up. Like, they don't really have a standing army at this point. And Orphilius, well, yeah, they've got a lot. 25 bandits on top of everything else. I mean, the bandits are alone should be able to take care of all this. They'll lose a lot of units in the process, but they should be able to wipe out Flipstep's commander, wipe out Flipstep's everything. Just done. There it is. Commander gone. And everything else pretty much following immediately after. That was well done. And as for the Jack, and the Jack's doing a great job. That's the thing. This Jack has been... I mean, for its cost, not sure, but just for getting everything out of the way. Because Jack's pretty much counter-shielded units, especially thugs, because they have to get under the shields, and then the shields don't do anything. And another Jack coming in here. Nice damage. I mean, getting damage dealt. The Stardust finally stopping that Jack. But still, Caretaker down, so that's a proxy factory that has to be delayed. Or just proxy reclaim has to be delayed. Another Metal Extractor down as well. Flipstep, however, they lost three Metal Extractors and their commander. So they lost 10 Metal per second in that assault. It's nowhere near even. Orphelius is getting leads here and there. But it's enough. It is enough to get Orphelius ahead. And Orphelius is going to take another plateau. And Orphelius' army, I mean, compared to what... I mean, we have basically Pyro... Pyro Rapier composition. Which, on top of the Moderator Placeholder, it's kind of interesting. Moderator Placeholder... This is what I was talking about. This should actually work pretty well. Placeholder on the thugs, not doing much. But yeah, like I said, getting through the shields. Just getting rid of the shields. Shields can't last. Because also, bear in mind that as soon as one thing gets hit, the shields get transferred, and then if the shields are less than a thousand health, or possibly less than a... I'm not sure how that works, actually. Less than a thousand. Okay. So it counts the whole damage that will be dealt to the shield. If it's less than the shielding amount, it goes through. So yeah, moderators wreck shields. It's kind of a weird setup. I've talked about before about how the comp the matchup between jump bots and cloaky bots is weird. Like in the early game, it's kind of difficult because what do you do? If you go for Zeus, then you get moderators on you. And if you go for like glaives, the pyros are really hard to deal with. And Shieldbot has an easier time with the Pyros, but... And also the Puppies, especially the Puppies. But, yeah, getting rid of the Moderators, like, good luck with that. You're... Th I mean, Rogues might work. Bandits might work depending on numbers. But Thugs are dead. Completely dead in the water. There's nothing they can do. They're done. So, that's kind of how that goes. Flipstep. Pushing back a fair bit, though. I mean, they are forcing Orphelius to really second-guess themselves here. Oh, and if these Vandals die, if enough of these Vandals die, there's only these seven. That's it. That's all the Vandals in the game. If they die, that opens a lot up for Flipstip. Because Flipstip has been building a few Rapiers here and there. Like, they have Rapiers. They have the Brawler as well. So they have air units they'd love to use, and if they get rid of the anti-air, then they can use them. But if the anti-air stays alive, then it's a problem. Still the seven. Nothing's changed. But the Brawler doesn't seem to care. The Brawler's just going in. Trying to get rid of Convicts. Not actually dealing any meaningful damage. Oh, no, never mind. It is dealing some meaningful damage. Not a lot, though. Like, it's kind of the opposite situation of the Moderators. While Moderators have very high burst damage and can just penetrate shields, that's not the case at all for Brawlers. They have really low burst damage, so they end up just smacking into shields repeatedly because the shields recharge. There's the proxy factory, or Phileas with the proxy air plant going for proxy with Verns. Okay, if this is not spotted, that'll turn the game around again, because the Wyvern will just tear apart this entire force. I mean, a few Wyverns. It's 2,000 damage a shot, but still. Damage will be dealt. A lot of damage will be dealt. And suicide mission Pyro trying to get through here. It doesn't really matter, though. I mean, it's dying, but it doesn't matter, because Orphelia's throwing in the towel... And just done, apparently. Despite the fact that they're actually in the lead. Ah. Uh, win by fatigue. Well done, Flipstiff, for out-enduring your opponent. You get the game. Man, I know that feeling, though. I've been there with, like, where Ophelius is. I am there so often. It sucks. I, I, it's horrible trying to play when tired. Like, you want to play. You really do. But it's like, your brain just can't keep up because you just need sleep. 
or maybe to eat, or possibly to go for a light jog. You know, something, but yeah, it's tough. But yeah, the entire game, Orphelius with an advantage consistently throughout the game. So yeah, a bit of an unfortunate end there. Kind of sucks that that happened, but hopefully in the next game, the next game should be better. Google Frog and 400 on Trojan Hills. Favorite map, and these players are... Well, Google Frog's really good. 400's very good. See how that goes. So, stay tuned. That'll be up in a couple minutes.